All right, we are here at Someday Farm on a blustery March day, well fueled by donuts, and we are about to tackle some apple tree pruning. We have Josh up there in the top, and we have Tully in the orange coat down below, and we have Scout wielding her mighty loppers. <laughs> so, Scout, why did you drag us up to this freezing uh, tree? Because this is the time to prune not only our fruit trees, but our fruit shrubs and our vines as well. So we're getting Tully and Josh to work on the first of the issues we have here. We're cutting out diseased and dying and deformed and just any kind of um, extra growth that we don't wanna see, not only will it bring disease, but it will also deter the formation of fruit. And why do we do this now in this season? Why don't we do it in a nice, much warmer, happier day? <laughs> the best time to do this is right now because first of all, we can see because we don't have leaves on the trees, but also uh, they're, already, they're just as it starts to grow again, it'll cap off the places that we've already cut. Beautiful, thank you. So Scott, what should I cut first? Okay, okay, the first thing to cut, especially on a fairly young tree like this, this is actually 20 years old. It was planted when my when, on, one of my sons was born at home, is you're gonna cut the water sprouts, Tully. Look at these, come over here and see the ones that are a different color than the main branches, and they're going straight up. And they're the ones that aren't ever gonna produce fruit, and they're taking away the sun from the main branches that are gonna produce the fruit, and they're also sapping the energy from the plant. So go ahead and trim some of those up. You can see where they go, they're going straight up. And cut them as low down as possible by the collar. Yep, give it a good, and they really have to be sharp. Yep, you got it. Sharp, is it sharp? Sharp. It's sharp, all right, try it. Here's another one that's perfect. You can see it goes straight up. It's not gonna produce fruits, and we wanna cut it with, yeah, perfect. Nice. And here, so you can see the color is different than the main branches. And they seem pretty smooth, too. Yeah, smooth and almost whip-like. And you could take those inside and they'll, um, they'll start to leaf out. All right, Josh, what in the heck are you doing at the top of the tree? I am cutting all of the dead and diseased branches up here. So... And you're cutting as close to the main yes. branch as possible. Yep. And why are you um, cutting the ones that are going straight up? So the energy can go to other ones. Okay. And do you want to you want to have a tall tree or a kind of a short shorter tree? Scott, what's your answer on that? I think what we want is we want to have it grow out as much as possible. We want to have an open center and branches that spread out to get the sunshine, lots of airflow, and the taller it is, also the harder it is to do what, Tully? Get the apples. <laughs> get get the, the apples. apples. <laughs> so Scout, I'm seeing some nice gaps here in the tree, and that's to let the sunshine in, but you know what I heard, Scout? No, no, what did you hear, I heard Maria? an old, old farmer's tale that you should be able to have gaps within a tree that are big enough where you can throw a cat through. <laughs> Well, we could say we could throw a chicken through. We could throw or a, a chicken. duck notice, through. Uh, viewers, please note there are no more cats on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Scout, can these can these same techniques happen uh, for pruning apples and peaches and plum and cherry and whatever fruit trees in Vermont? That's a really good question. We have a lot of fruit trees we can grow in Vermont, and we do grow here at Sunday Farm, and they all have a little bit different way in which they grow. But the premise is the same: that you're cutting making it as open as possible, you're cutting diseased, you're cutting deformed trees, you're cutting the dead and dying branches. So those are all the same premises. We might not have water sprouts and we just have a little bit different configuration of the branches, but it's the same. You can really look at that tree and get a good idea of how to trim it up to produce the most amount of fruit you possibly can. And having a healthy tree. Scott, what is this? Oh, this is one of my favorite bushes of all time. It's a fruit as well, and it's called the service berry. And the reason we grow service berries is because we can't grow blueberries. Blueberries need acid soil, 
service berries can grow in sweet soil. We have sweet soil here and it's like a blueberry. It's a wonderful, very hardy bush to grow. It produces a lot. It takes a long time to get your berries though. This Tully, yeah, go ahead and feel it. <laughs> this is the same as this one. This is already five years old. It's not getting too big, but this is about maybe 12 years old. So it goes quickly from here to here, but it took a long time to get to this stage. And this is the same thing for pruning. What would you do with the center, Tully? Thin it out. <sighs> Good. Good answer. <laughs> You're going to thin out the, the middle because we need more sunlight getting in there. We have very little fruit in the middle of that bush. So what we really need to do is get in there and chop this out and your paint behind would be very valuable because we're going to have to cut some bigger branches in here. And by cutting the bigger branches, we're going to open up some wounds there. And so we'll paint this on that wound to just protect the, tr the shrub. We should do a before and after picture later. It's an elderberry tree. And why do you like elderberries? I love elderberries because they're sweet and they're filled with really good vitamins. And when do you eat them? How do you eat them? I boil them down into a syrup and eat a spoonful every morning. Wow, okay. <laughs> and this is a very different fruit to prune than the apples, the grapes, or the service berries because what we're really doing here is taking out mostly just dead and dying branches. We don't care so much about the shape it performs on its own ways, but there's always a lot of rot and dead and diseased branches in here because it's got a hollow stem. So look, Tully just found that right now, and there's a hollow piece in there, and we need to cut that out. As I said, it's normally hollow, but we don't want water to penetrate in there and rot out the good growth. So there's a bunch of stuff that we need to get rid of. Um, that is dead or diseased and rotting in this plant. We also want to keep it contained. We want it to look tight without getting too floppy. So it's the opposite of the other trees where we want them to expand out. We want to keep this a little tighter, but we also want to do, be able to get to all the elderberries and not have the birds get to them. So we want to keep the fruit fairly low to the ground so that we can get it in the bird's camp. So Tully can have her tonic every morning. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Maria, where are we? We are up at the Sunday Farm uh, beautiful grape orchard. Is it an orchard? It's an orchard. Okay, grape Whatever. orchard. And um, your son, Lewin, has uh, established these about two years ago, and they are actually, uh, they're actually grapes. And Tully, what kind of grapes are they? Cool, hearty grapes. Wine grapes. Wine grapes. And we do have table grapes down below. And they're much larger and they also get pruned like these do. And these get pruned in the first year or two. How do they get pruned? Actually, you just prune them down so they just become a single stalk. Okay, single stalk. Single stem. Single stem so that, again, that puts all the energy into the beautiful growth. And the roots. And the roots. And so here's where it's been trimmed up all the way up. And then in the next year, we're going to prune it so that there's branches going out from either side. And that will be then trained along a wire. And right behind you, Tully, can oh, you yeah. show the wire that they are going to be pruned to? Again, it's a whole different kind of pruning than the apple tree. Um, we're going to keep them low to the ground, um, mainly because we don't want frost damage. And ironically, Lewin was back here from California in January when we had that warm spell, and you, you guys were up here pruning these, weren't you? Yeah. Who would have yeah. thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> so in two years from now, we'll be getting wine grapes if we do our pruning carefully. And Tully, tell Why me Tully? what's in that. And if we don't do it carefully, every time we prune or cut um, a stem of the grapes, we will um, fill it with a tree wound because they're very susceptible to disease to keep all of our plants safe. So that's like a paint, is a it paint. not? A okay. wound, a okay. wound so dressing, if you will. All right, so we go through that. If you look at all the different cuts on here, you'll see little black paint marks where that has been put on every single right. cut, just as a precaution. Wow. 
Thank you, Tully. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Scout. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Stay warm, everybody. <laughs>